machines. So here's a machine that is improperly parked. Uh, it's a forklift and the forks are off of the ground. So what's holding them up? Just exact same thing we just looked at. We've got a, a hydraulic cylinder in here, the uh, mass cylinder, and the oil in the base end or head end of that cylinder is trapped by the oil in the hose going to a control valve. When the control valve is in the hold position, the operator's uh, taking their hand off of that control, it's spring centered to the middle. That traps the oil in that hose and that trapped oil is what's preventing that the weight of this mast uh, from going to the ground. So if I get into the uh, operator seat of this machine, I can put the uh, implements on the ground simply by pushing forward on this linkage uh, because this machine has a mechanically operated directional control valve. What I'm going to do is operate all of the controls on all axes of movement and when you've got mechanical valves like this generally that means that you are going to be connecting when the machine is off the engine's not running or in this case electric motors not running I've connected both sides of that mass cylinder by moving the control valve back and forth I've connected them back to tank and when I connected the base or head end to tank well the, then the gravity could operate that cylinder and it could put the forks back on the ground so that's the proper park position for this machine. Where do I find that information? Well, this machine has the operation and maintenance manual here behind the seat. Uh, and this one, unfortunately, doesn't give that kind of detail like you'd expect, but it does tell you when you're parking the machine that you want to put uh, implements on the ground. So they do instruct the operator under this section called machine parking. They tell you to put the uh, tips of the forks on the ground uh, but they don't give a lot of specifics about how that can be done. If you're doing it with the uh, electric motor operating or the engine on in the machine, well then you you could actually be exerting some downforce and building some pressure in the rod end of the cylinder. So um, it takes a little bit of machine specific training, but in this case, operating the controls with the uh, machine off uh, is how it's going to to release that stored energy. Now, this machine, the hydraulic tank on this machine is vented to atmosphere. So if I need to change a hose or something on that cylinder or remove that cylinder, and I go to the lines there, I'm, I'm reasonably sure there's no stored energy and no uh, massive amount of oil is gonna come spraying out at me. If the tank is pressurized on a machine, well then the tank could be holding some pressure. Some uh, hydraulic tanks are pressurized to 10, 15, 20 PSI. Uh, and that's not likely going to be a deadly force, but it can sure be annoying. And again, burning hot oil can come out of the machines at operating temperature. Okay, I've got another machine here, a hydraulic excavator. And once again, looks like the machine's not parked properly. We've got an implement that's raised off of the ground. Uh, from certain angles, it might appear that that bucket's sitting on the ground, but from when you get down and look, you can actually see there's a space. So what that means is, that whole front uh, boom bucket stick assembly is being held up by trapped oil on this side of the piston and this end of this hydraulic cylinder. Trapped oil is what's holding that implement up there. So we don't want to park it like that because the technician comes to work on it to change a hose. Obviously we've got stored oil. If someone uh, gets underneath this implement, if I'm working on it, you know, changing a cutting edge or something and my foot is under there, of course, we never want to put our, uh, any part of our body in a position where we're trusting trapped oil to hold some implement that could crush us up in the air. And the more you learn about hydraulics, the less trusting you become of the systems that are trapping that oil. Not, not least of which is seals on a piston inside the cylinder. But you got to realize what's going on in the hydraulic control valve as well to fully understand how that oil is staying trapped and how unreliable uh, that is uh, when you're betting body parts on it. So uh, in this case, the, the trapped oil is in this end of the cylinder, which means it's in this steel pipe, uh, which comes up around this side of the cylinder. And I've got trapped oil in this hose and right back to the control valve where a spool valve 
uh, spool in that control valve is, is with a metal to metal connection trapping that oil. Now I also notice this hose is stiff. Now that's not a, always a good predictor of uh, whether or not there's pressure in a hose, but sometimes it can, it, can, uh, it, it can add to the questioning. This one, of course, is a little floppier because uh, it doesn't have uh, pressurized oil in it. This one, it's stiff for two reasons. One, the radius of the bend here is tighter than that one, uh, but also we've got oil, of course, trapped in here holding that implement up. So, if I need to take this hose off, uh, I'm quite likely going to get sprayed with high pressure oil if I want to service this fitting. Even if I just want to tighten it, uh, I don't want to do that without verifying first that we've gotten rid of this stored oil pressure that's holding that implement up. So how do we do it on this machine? Can we do what we did on that uh, lift truck? Can we just cycle the controls? Let's try that. So here's the control for the uh, boom. Let's hold, see if the we can lower the boom to the ground, and we can't. I'm moving the control valve back and forth, and that's not lowering the implement to the ground like it did on our forklift. Uh, I realize I've got an activation lever here that uh, enables the hydraulic functions. If that's forward, the hydraulics are enabled. When you exit or in enter the cab, you pull this lever back, and that disables the controls. So I'll put that in the activated position and see if then I can lower the implement to the ground. And still no dice. So, this machine is not as simple hydraulically as our uh, forklift. So, on this machine, and again, there's no standard here. I'd have to consult the service literature for this machine uh, to find out that it has what's known as a uh, accumulator in the system, and this is pilot or servo controlled hydraulics. Now you may have a combination of controls in the cabin machine. You may have some functions that are mechanically controlled like our, like our forklift had uh, and other functions that are uh, pilot or servo controlled like this boom function is. And you might also have some electro hydraulic functions. I see I've got some buttons in here for our uh, rototilt attachment on the front of the machine. It's electro hydraulically controlled. Um, but to get this on this particular machine, to get the uh, boom down to the ground, I'm gonna have to first start the engine. So I gotta put the uh, safety lever up. I'm gonna start the engine. And I'm gonna let it idle for about 20 seconds. While the engine's idling, the pilot pump on this machine is charging up my pilot system accumulator. That pilot system accumulator then feeds the hydraulic controls. So when that, once that pilot system accumulator is charged, then if I put the activation valve forward and I move the boom control forward, then I can get the implements to the ground. And then if I cycle the controls, I'm also ensuring that the uh, swing, stick, and bucket functions are all on the ground. And I'm gonna cycle the uh, blade control as well. And I'll even cycle the travel controls on this machine by cycling all the hydraulic controls with the engine off, but my accumulator charged, that's the process for this particular machine. So what we're ending up with here is a lot more questions than answers. Uh, is that gonna work on every hydraulic excavator, that process I just went through? The answer is no. Uh, some excavators may have electro-hydraulic controls, you may have to have the key on, so other machines, there may be other procedures to go through. So it's, there's no generalization here. It's machine specific process. You've got to have training on virtually every type of system that you're working on and know how to look in the operation and maintenance manual and the service manual to find out how to release that energy. Now, uh, have I released all of the energy on this machine? Am I safe to go and take that hose off? And the answer is almost. Uh, I'm pretty sure I won't uh, get a, a pressurized injection injury if I take that hose off now, but I may get an annoying push of oil from the hydraulic tank because the hydraulic tank on this machine, uh, this particular model of excavator, is pressurized. So I'm going to have to go to the hydraulic tank and let the pressure off. So on my way by here, I'm just going to check this hose. This hose a little less stiff than it was a minute ago. Um, again, that's only a relative 
comparison. I don't want to go by that before I start taking a fitting off. I want to make sure I've done the, that proper procedure um, to make sure that the implement is of course on the ground and all the uh, the weight is no longer pushing on trapped oil inside that cylinder. So to get the uh, tank vented on this machine, this particular manufacturer, how easy did they make that? Well, not very. There's a, a cap on this hydraulic tank has to be removed to get the pressure off the uh, tank and they put it under a cover here that's bolted down. So I need to get some tools and take these bolts out. Once those bolts are out, that'll give me access to the hydraulic tank cap and then I can re release that energy. So I've taken that cover off, took uh, five bolts out, and that gets me to this cap on the hydraulic tank, which I can see looks a lot like a radiator cap. Uh, and that's because it is a radiator cap. Uh, because like an engine coolant system, this is designed to hold in maybe 10 or 12 PSI of pressure. And then once the pressure builds beyond that in the hydraulic tank, uh, it's gonna open and vent out this hose and vent the pressure off. And then overnight as the oil cools down or in colder weather, uh, this cap is going to break a vacuum the same way it would on a radiator. So this, if I open this cap, I didn't hear any hissing out because this has been released before, but uh, that by taking that cap loose, uh, that, that allows me to verify that the tank is not holding any pressure. And now I'm in pretty good shape if I want to go take a hose off. If I needed to uh, service the cylinder or change this hose or take remove this connection for any reason, um, now my only concern about oil coming out of there is I'm going to need a drain pan and something to collect it so I don't make a, a mess. But I don't expect oil to be coming out of there uh, with any kind of a, a push from system pressure or stored energy of any kind. Now again, I wish I could say this is the procedure you're going to use. This is one of many, many different procedures uh, to verify that pressure is removed from a hose feeding an actuator like a hydraulic cylinder. So the objective here was to let you know that there's, there's education required before you can approach something like this and safely uh, open up a connection. And that may be dealer specific training on a certain model or family of machine, uh, and certainly brand specific. Uh, and in lieu of that, knowing how to consult the operation and maintenance manual and the service manual and looking for the procedure to ensure that we've got zero energy before we uh, disconnect a fitting like that.